with jockey Daryl Jacob in a very familiar setting, it has to be said. Daryl, thanks very much for uh, joining us. Um, first of all, as a jockey, what does the Cheltenham Festival mean to you? Oh, it's just magic, isn't it? Um, it's just, look, it's when you when you get into to race, then you want to be a jockey. I mean, I remember from Ireland, um, you know, when I was when I got into into racing in Ireland, I mean, we used to follow Cheltenham, and it was it was an unbelievable. And we used to, as, as when we were growing up and, and riding. You know, when I was in Desi Hughes's, um, we were like, um, you know, in, in all, we, you know, every, we all wanted to be a Cheltenham and, uh, you know, it's always continued and I've been very lucky, I've been there every year since I've come over from Ireland and I've had some fantastic days there as well. You've got some great rides booked, of course, for, for Simon and Nair and Isaac Swade. Uh, we'll start with So Royale, champion chase bound. Yeah, he's, he's going for the champion chase. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to him. Obviously, he, he beat Simply Ned on his first run for about 10 months. Um, at the start of the year, put a line through his last run in the, in the at, at Sandown. Um, the girl was just too soft for him, and uh, he, look, he goes there, school him the other morning, and he's in really good form. Look, obviously, Al, Al, Al Tiori, he, he's exceptional, and he, he's going to be very, very difficult to beat. But um, hopefully, my lad can run a really good race, and even if we finish second, third, we'd be very proud of him. Killed us out, uh, JLT. You yeah, my fond memories from it last year. Yeah, he's uh, he's gone for the JLT. Be nice if we could win it. We finished second in it for the last few years, so mm. it'd be nice if we can go one better and win it. But Kilts has done nothing wrong. He's improved with every run. If he is really good, um, and I, th I thought that I thought this handicap at Cheltenham last time was a really good stepping stone mm. for him. Really, if I'm being honest with you, it was a good, honest gallop. It was a tough race, um, and he, he had to really improve on his first run to win that race, and he did do. And I thought he he had a little bit more left in the tank. He pricked his ears. Look at on official ratings, he has to improve possibly about six six pounds mm. to get to Deputy the Soul lost in translation. But I think that's well within his grasp he's an improved horse and I think he goes there with a real life chance. And Bristol the is surely one of the forgotten horses in the Gold Cup, the Betfair Chase winner. He's obviously if the Gold Cup was run at Haydock he'd probably be the favourite, but yeah. does he have a chance here? That's crazy. I mean I, he should be nowhere near the price he mm. is. Think about the thing about Bristol and everyone like he he hasn't performed at some of these meetings but We've trained him a lot differently this year. He's been, he, you know what I mean. He's campaign, been mm. campaigned a lot differently. People obviously haven't taken notice of it. He won a bet for a chase. He's beaten Clandis Fogo. He's beaten my fight. He's beaten him. He's beaten all of them really good horses. Um, you know, obviously he had a little tip up at at, um, at at Kempton. But if you draw a line through his blip at Kempton, and we went straight from the bet fair to here, what price should it be for that? I, I think he's got him. I think he's got a great chance, especially with the rain that's coming. Um, yeah, he did finish second in the JLT. Everyone thinks he's a Haydock specialist horse. He's not. He's 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 won around Chepstow and the and the Grade One finale. He's he's been on around undulating horse uh, tracks. The difference is this year is we know he's going there really fresh, and that's when he puts up his best performances when he's very very fresh. So he's been camp campaigned a little bit different this year, you know, with the hope um, that 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 it, that it suits him. And I think I think everyone's come together with him. And I'm going to school him on Monday morning. I was been speaking to Sparky, and he said he'd never felt the horse in better form. So um, I can't wait to ride him, ride him, and school him on Monday. And I'm, I'm, I really, you know, I can't wait to ride him in, in, in the Gold Cup because I think it's a good, I think it's a really good Gold Cup. But I think it's very, very open, and I think he could run the race six or seven times, and I think he could possibly have five different winners. Mm. So I think it's whatever turns up on the day, um, and I think my horse will turn up on the day in, in really, really good form. And finally, anything else we should be looking out for? Obviously, we've got Janika in the two and a half handicap. Um, we've got Top Notch coming back for his mm -hmm. stairs, and that's really interesting because he finished third behind Paisley Park uh, Ascot on his first run in the stairs, um, and he he wouldn't have been you know he wouldn't have been one hundred percent tuned for that race. He always needs his first run, um, and I'm really excited about riding him. I think you know this trip or back over hurdles. You know he's a very look. He's he's a very very good chaser. He's a very talented. Mm -hmm. chaser. I think he was third favourite for the Ryanair, but with the potential that we have other horses for that race, um, I think the stairs looks a really good option for him. Daryl, best of luck next week. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks very much.